Hey, fellas. <laughs> my daughter's my daughter's in the background. School's closed today, and she's bored. So, hey, grab a cup of coffee. Let's paint a P thirty eight. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> all right, as you can see, it's all put together. Uh, the owner supplied me with some resin turbochargers, which I, I, I put in. And it would have been best if I would kept these out and put them in later just so I could paint them separately. Now I'm going to have to work around it. And the reason I put them in first is because I would have had to put these panels in after I painted it. And, uh, and they didn't fit exactly right. I had to do a little bit of filling around them. And that's just something that I wouldn't have been able to do after I painted it. So uh, there were a few fit issues, most notably around the nose. The, the front nose cone didn't fit really well. And I had to do a lot of sanding and rescribing and filling. So I went ahead and primered it with uh, Mr. Finishing Surfacer 1500 Gray, which is my favorite primer. I put a couple different coats on that. And... Uh, and polished it out. Well, I, I polished it out. I wouldn't say it's polished, but uh, I used a 2000 grit sandpaper and got it real smooth. And one thing when you when you do a natural metal finish, if you want it real shiny, you got to start off. Every coat has to be smooth. <coughs> now, this that isn't going to be um, totally necessary to get it extremely smooth because I'm going to do a lot of weathering on it. In, in my opinion, it, it doesn't need to be perfect, but I want to start off with a good base coat. So I've got that down. One thing I like to do before I, before I start painting, once I get the primer coat on, is uh, especially with a model like this that I'm putting on a base, is to get the base all situated. So I've got my base started. I'm probably going to do some artwork on here, but I've got my acrylic rod bent. And as you can see there, I've got the hole in there. And this is all, this landing gear bay is, is filled in with uh, milliput, so it gives it a nice sturdy, sturdy place for that to, uh, to hold the plane up. So it's going to look just like that. So I've got that taken care of. So what I'm going to do next, run through how I'm going to tackle this. <clears throat> this is kind of what I'm going to try to emulate. And this is a book that came with the decals. It's got a bunch of artwork with some really good uh, pictures of weathering. And uh, this is what I'm going to try to copy. And how I'm going to do that is I've done a lot of experimenting with natural metal finish. Uh, I've watched a lot of videos. Doug's, Doug's Models has, uh, has some, some good videos on this. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to start off with Mr. Color GX2. It's a gloss black. And I'm going to put probably three, maybe four coats of this. I'm going to start off with 40% paint, 60% Mr. Color Leveling Thinner. Then I'm going to dilute this more with Leveling Thinner, put another coat, and then dilute it some more with mostly Leveling Thinner and a little bit of paint. And that typically gives me a nice, shiny, uh, gloss black surface. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a marbling layer. <clears throat> with uh, Tamiya XF69 NATO Black. After that, I'm going to come back with Alclad Chrome. And then over that, AK Extreme Metal Aluminum. And you'll see how this turns out once I do it. Um, it gives it a nice kind of splotchy, uh, worn aluminum finish. Then I've got for some... Uh, for some weathering I'm gonna and, and different panels. I've got some white aluminum, which I'm going to try to. If you can see here, let's zoom in a little bit. What I'm gonna try to recreate is this worn effect right along the, uh, where they would, they would uh, step on the wings. You can see that. And I'm going to try to, use this white aluminum to lighten that area along with some uh, a sponge technique with some masking fluid. So I'm going to try to recreate it that way. If not, I may have to figure out something else. I've also got some dark aluminum for shading, uh, some gunmetal, which is just a little bit darker than a dark aluminum because sometimes this, this dark aluminum doesn't show up real well. 
Then I've got some dura aluminum for some different panels. And then I'm going to try to recreate some of these uh, dark spots in the center with either the dark aluminum, gunmetal, or I'm going to try the smoke, Tamiya smoke first. And this is just a little bit more controllable than the, uh, the metallic paints as far as getting in and doing real fine work. So that's how I'm going to get started. Uh, I'm going to get it uh, primed up and I'll film some of that just to show you how I, how I do it. And we'll move on from there. Okay, and before I start painting, uh, what I did last night is I vacuumed, vacuumed my, uh, my carpet in, the, in my modeling room, trying to get uh, as much of the little dust and stuff from sanding out of the room as possible. And no matter what you do, you're still gonna get um, little pieces of dust that, that uh, get onto your model while you're painting. That's just the way it is. And uh, so, but I've tried to eliminate that, uh, a, a lot of it just by, by vacuuming the room and leaving it overnight to kind of settle down. So I'm just gonna wipe this off with a tack cloth, make sure I got any little pieces of dust or whatever off of here. And uh, you may have to go along as you're painting. And if you see one before you paint on it, <laughs> just try to get it off. So I'll set this aside and I've stuck an acrylic rod through the bottom so I can hold it. Hopefully that doesn't fall down. That would be sad. And now I'm going to mix my Mr. Color Leveling Thinner. Get some of these. So like I said, I want to start off with this GX2 and I want to mix it with a, uh, a 40 to 60 paint to thinner ratio. So let's see here. And this is really good stuff. It stinks, but it's good stuff. Okay, and I got my Mr. Color Leveling Thinner. I always put the caps back on because you will spill it eventually. And the airbrush I'm using is going to be my workhorse Awada HPCS. And I've cleaned it out and I've tried to get any little particles out of there that I can. I've rinsed it out with alcohol. So hopefully I'm not spraying out any dust particles. Let's fill this up. Okay. All right, so now I'm gonna get to painting. Now you wanna start off Painting any crevices that you got. Uh, let's see. Like I'm going to want to start off painting along here, inside any areas that uh, that uh, you need to really get into, and then do the flat surfaces last. Okay, I've got my initial 
first coat down. And as you can see, it's kind of a, a matte finish. It's a little glossy in areas. I think it's because it went on a little more wet. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to dilute it. Um, dilute my GX2 down to about uh, maybe 30, somewhere between 30 and 20 uh, percent paint to uh, 70 to 80 percent thinner. And I'm going to spray it on wet. You have to be careful uh, when you do this because uh, you'll get runs and, and everything else and you don't want it to eat all the way through to the primer. So what I'm going to do is um, get that diluted and I've reduced the amount of air pressure. I can't really tell you what the air pressure is just because I, I don't really keep track of the number. I just turn it down a couple notches just so I can have a little bit more control over it. So I'm going to get this diluted and uh, start spraying the second coat. Okay, with uh, the second coat, as you can see, I kind of missed, it's kind of thin right there, so I have to be careful. Uh, with the second coat, you want to spray it on pretty wet. If you can get it in here in the light so you can see it. You want to spray it wet, but you don't want it to, uh, you don't want to get any runs either. And make sure it goes down wet. And that's what's going to give you that shine. And when you're spraying it in, it, uh, in angles like this, you want to try to hit it as head on as possible. Because that overspray is going to get down here along the bottom and you're going to have a rough texture. But with spraying at such a low air pressure and really thin paint, it's going to limit the uh, that, that roughness that you're going to get. I'm going to continue spraying this put my second coat on then come back with a third coat with even thinner and again I'm going to spray it wet and I'll show you what the result is when I'm done. Ignore the kids screaming in the background but I've got my gloss my gloss black layers on and uh, yeah, I think it turned out pretty good. Now this is three coats. It's, I've got the uh, 40 to 60 percent ratio for my for my first layer and then the second layer I diluted it put it on really wet for the second and third layers and I come up with with this and it's uh, pretty glossy you could actually make this glossier by by maybe sanding it down and buffing it out but uh, for the purposes of this build I don't think that's necessary this is this is glossy enough and you can see it's got a really good finish really uh, smooth finish to it a little bit of orange peel but not bad uh, I don't see any scratches so I think I took care of all my scratches uh, hopefully when I spray the metalizer on they don't pop out but that's always a possibility but uh, so there it is with the gloss black I couldn't get in into uh, some of those little tiny crevices in there so I'll try to get some some metalizer in there otherwise you know it's gonna be gray but I don't I don't really think you're gonna notice once you get it all done so uh, next step is to do a marbling layer with the NATO black okay I've got my NATO black in my airbrush and I'm using the Pro Convoy 770 it's got the 0.18 millimeter nozzle and so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make, um, like, make my marbling layer. And I'm just going to go along and just make little squiggly marks. Now I don't want, I don't want too much. I just want to uh, create some contrast between the, the shiny black and the NATO black. And it doesn't have to be perfect, just little spots here and there. 
I might have got this mixed up a little too thick, so I'm going <clears> to <throat> probably thin this down because it's having a hard time coming out of this small needle. As you can see there, I'm just making little, uh, making little variations, and trying not to make a pattern. And this is going to give you, when I spray my chrome, it's going to give me a contrast, like it's worn and maybe stressed aluminum. Okay. So I'm going to continue doing this. I'm going to do the whole plane, and then we'll come back and start hitting it with the metalizers. Okay, the marbling layer is on, and as you can see, it's not very tight. It's not neat. It's kind of messy. But uh, my whole goal with this is to whenever I put the metalizers on is to break up that reflectivity. And uh, if there are any patterns, <clears throat> they're gonna be broken up by, by these subsequent steps. So what I'm gonna do now is throw on, oops, throw on some uh, Alclad Chrome. And I'm gonna put this on in very thin layers. It's not gonna cover, uh, it's, it's it's kind of hard to, to cover <laughs> cover all this up just because this is this is pretty translucent. So I'm gonna put uh, probably a layer or two of this on and then I'll start spraying the alkali or the uh, AK aluminum. And you can see how that uh, that contrast really shows through this um, this chrome outside chrome stuff. So if I were just to leave it like this, that'd be way too strong. But when I start covering it up with uh, the aluminum, it's it's going to uh, tone it down just a little bit. Here it is with the chrome on it. As you can see, it's uh, it's it's kind of patchy, not uh, not very consistent, and it is shiny in places and not so shiny in other places. So uh, you might ask me, well, why don't you just throw the aluminum on instead of doing the alkaline chrome first? And I can't really explain why or how it works. But uh, throughout my experiments, <clears throat> I stumbled upon this, and whatever reason, it, it looked better to me. Um, maybe it's just, uh, maybe it's an unnecessary step, but uh, from, from what I've done in the past, uh, this method seemed to work. So it's the one that I'm sticking with. So now I'm going to take my AK Extreme Metal Aluminum, and I'm going to start layering up until I get the, uh, the marbling layer just so there's just a hint of it. I don't want it as predominant. I mean, you can see every bit of the marbling layer that I, that I put on. And, but but this, uh, the extreme metal is gonna kind of cover that up a little bit. So I'm gonna layer this until I get it to where I want. 
and I can't tell you how many coats it's gonna take. It's just gonna just gonna be by eye. So I'm gonna get on with that. Okay, now I've got the base coat of uh, my aluminum finish down, and uh, I think it's looking pretty good. This is about where I want it, when I want it, so. And this is with the AK aluminum over top of the, the gloss black, the NATO black, and the uh, Alclad chrome. And you can see I left it kind of patchy, and I want this area a little bit darker here because I'm gonna to try to do that, um, use some masking fluid and create some some contrast, like if the, uh, the aluminum's a little bit more worn in that area. But uh, that's kind of what I'm looking for. And it's, it's kind of reflective, it's more reflective in some areas than, than others because of the, because of the, uh, the marbling layer. You can kind of see it there, pretty faint. But in the light, there's it's just not one solid piece of aluminum. There are all these varying uh, contrasts and, and uh, uh, changes in the reflectivity, which is what I was going for. So on the next video, I'm going to I'm going to let this sit overnight and uh, cure up. I found that works best uh, when I go to tape some things off because I'm going to tape up some panel lines. <clears throat> and uh, do some varying shades on different panels. Probably hit some panel lines with a dark aluminum color and, uh, and go from there. And then after that, I'm gonna try to uh, darken some of the inside of the panels in certain places. And then I can start masking off and painting stripes and everything else that goes with this specific plane. So I will uh, see you on the next video.